Hey everybody, I want to wheeze them here. This is something I've been meaning to do for a while. This is not uh, your questions answered. I'm actually still working on that one. Uh, namely because I'm still trying to get answers to some of the questions. Uh, apparently I've got you know, a few people willing to attempt to take what I want to know and see if we can get answers to it from someone. So uh, trying to piece that one together still. This is something that has actually been up on the blog for quite some time. One of the first things that got posted is all text-based. And uh, I've been wanting to record it several nights now. I just keep having other stuff happen. Uh, the sales, the GameStop poster, Polar Whirlwind, yada yada. Uh, of course tonight, Game 7 of the NBA Finals. Uh, it was crazy weather here. The internet was actually down for quite some time. I guess it like knocked the modem out with the lightning or something. Uh, we just missed this like massive rainstorm that would like started flooding things again. Uh, as is, it was just really dusty, which is strange because it's rained and you know that usually suppresses the dust. But apparently, we have plenty of dust to go around. I'm not gonna focus too much on that. I'm gonna try to get this cranked out for you. Uh, First day of summer, uh, 621, I guess doesn't mean much, you know, at 2 in the morning, but when we wake up, you know, something to uh, take into account there. But essentially what I'm going to do is read verbatim the blog post. Uh, again, I'm somebody, you know, I kind of prefer the blog. If there's anything you want to see, I do headings. You can skip ahead. You don't have to, you know, listen to a whole video. You can do it at your own pace. But... Uh, Essentially what I did and the reason that it is text-based and it wasn't video, uh, this was a no video area basically. Uh, myself and the others that were brought out uh, by Step 3 and Activision to kind of attend D3C Swap Force firsthand. I uh, had a couple of you know stops on the agenda Power A, got to see all their cool stuff. I still have content from that one. I uh, haven't gotten up yet. Uh, then we kind of had some free roam time, if you will. Uh, right across from Power A was Nintendo. That was awesome. Uh, that was a packed booth. Uh, that's why it's when I eventually get that stuff up, it's going to be not great quality. Uh, just for the simple fact, there was like no walkway anywhere. It had a huge walkway. It was well designed. It's just it had way too many people in it and uh, very hard to navigate. That's actually, again, where I recorded the gameplay stuff for W Drums. Uh, got a little information from the Swap Force people there. They're basically, I didn't know if they were Nintendo or Activision people. Turns out they were Activision people. Uh, I saw them later on in the evening, kind of right before the After Hours deal. Uh, after that, uh, took a long time but I found water that was 250 a bottle and uh, then I somehow got from the building with Power A and Nintendo and a bunch of other people outside and to the building with Activision and Swap Force. Uh, that was a trip in and of itself. <laughs> so, essentially then you know kind of I ran into some of the guys again they were trying to all win hot dog. Uh, like I said I tried two times kind of checked the booth out. Uh, it was packed at that time, too. Uh, it was a little, I mean, you could kind of walk in there. It wasn't like as crammed in as Nintendo's deal was, but uh, it was during the hours, uh, it was pretty hopping. <laughs> and, uh, essentially, we got there, did that stuff, and then uh, still before E3 had technically closed uh, to the public uh, for the evening, uh, they actually took us backstage and... Uh, Basically, he went from all the hubbub down this hallway, uh, made a turn. Uh, actually, I think I have footage of that part, and then, like, right as we walked in, uh, I mean, it's, like, not great. I'm just I'm in a pack of people going in a room filled with people. Uh, it'll kind of give you an idea, though. But essentially, I mean, you take that long hallway down, we turned, and then there's just a doorway. It opened up into this, like, huge, kind of just like you see the castaways and Newlanders really really long room I guess it like ran kind of behind their uh, you know booth area if you will uh, might have been skewed more to the left I'm not 100 percent sure bottom line it was like a really long room uh, there were a lot of people in there um, insiders Activision the top people uh, the PR folk uh, it's where we met uh, Ali and uh, Callie I believe but uh, I think there were some NBA players in there man 
kind of like some higher end people, if you will, that I guess were brought out. And essentially then at the back, you know, kind of like behind Warnado, behind Sunburn, behind Boomer, there were other doors. And uh, each one of these doors went into a room that was really cool because it was like stadium style seating. I mean, you couldn't fit. I mean, if you crammed them in there, you might get like 25 to 30. I think people would be miserable. I think our group was like, you know, 10, 15-ish, something like that. Worked out real well. But uh, essentially, the people at the back, I think I was one of the first ones in. I went into the back corner, and uh, I had a great view. But essentially, had like three little tiers there. And then uh, down on the front, they did the demo uh, of Swap Force. This was different than the demo we could actually play. Uh, guys were super nice. Uh, demo guy, you know, he was kind of learning the game still. Uh, Apparently he was like getting progressively better. I guess you know he's kind of like been demoing it all day, etc. Uh, by the end of the week, he probably you know aced everything. But then uh, the head Activision guy, you know, the one you always see at E3 in the press conferences and Toy Fair, he was down there. Uh, super nice. He actually, I asked some questions. Uh, he didn't have immediate answers to, and he actually tried to run down people that would you know have answers for us. But. Uh, that is essentially the background, that's where we went. Uh, again, you couldn't record, couldn't take pictures, obviously, you know, can't take video, couldn't do the voice uh, recordings or anything. Uh, for better or worse, uh, I can write really fast, I can write really small, I can basically, from college, I could like verbatim what the professor said, even like the pointless stuff, you know, unrelated to the lecture. Uh, there's always like the off-topic stuff that someone asks when you should be getting to leave early and they then make everyone suffer through an extra 15 minutes. Uh, all that aside, I basically got to pin down everything. <laughs> and uh, I transcribed my notes. Uh, might have been a couple people that could actually read them. Uh, that would be a small minority of people. And uh, I pinned them out on the blog for you. And uh, then right here on the mini, you know, I've copied them from the blog, put them on the notepad. I'm actually just going to read this verbatim to you. The uh, reason I'm doing this, I know a lot of people prefer video form over the blog. Uh, so for those of you that are like that, here you go. Before we do that, uh, Chase McCain is somewhere out here. There's a new series, Castaways, Castaways, New Landers, New Landers. It's up on the blog. Got a couple other polls I'm going to do. Uh, this Polar Whirlwind, Skylander Day this Saturday at GameStop. Uh, I didn't get Polar even though she was out. Uh, she was street dated. But I did get this flyer in addition to the poster. That's a brand new battle pack. That's the Tower of Time. It has Popthorn, two magic items. Basically your conventional setup. Uh, I may slide those across on top of the Skylanders halfway through or so so you have something different to look at. But, uh, for better or worse, I'm just going to start reading to you now. Uh, basically what I called this was the E3 Skylander Swap Force notes from the backroom and private gameplay screening session. Uh, this is just a record of what I wrote shorthand from the ultra cool trip backstage of the Activision. Uh, going backstage, we were taken from the E3 floor of the Swap Force booth to a hallway that led to a backroom filled with an assortment of media insiders, high profile figures, Activision staff and more. It was absolutely bustling and just as crowded as the main floor. The only difference was the area was like a large oasis. Uh, basically what I mean by that, it was like a lounge setup. There was food, there was water, uh, cold water. It wasn't like the bottle I bought that uh, they warned me wasn't cool. Uh, Entering the private screening room, no cameras. All along the back hall of this room are separate smaller rooms. Uh, these rooms are the private screening rooms. Uh, closed door, seats 10 to 12 comfortably. Uh, stadium style for optimal viewing and no cameras or recording. And again, as I mentioned, lucky for you, I took shorthand notes the entire thing. Uh, why so tight? Quite simply put, it is because they are gracious enough to show us, uh, myself and some other Skylander fans, never before seen gameplay elements that are still in what they call an alpha build. Uh, to put that in layman terms, the game will look great, but it could have a few issues, etc. Uh, potential level settings and environments. They covered a few basics and actually began with Crusher. Giants worked just fine in Swap Force. They mentioned a few locations like the Old West, a Snowland, and Lush Jungles, which you will see some gameplay of from others. Uh, meaning that one was actually like one of the areas you could do in the demos. 
Uh, next up, they address Legacy Skylanders. Activision is honoring your past collection. One of the first things mentioned was how they plan to honor existing collections. Uh, that would be a great example of our castaways here. Uh, every Skylander you currently own will work in Swap Force. It's that simple. Nothing to argue. No ifs, ands, or buts. They will just work. Uh, take it for what it is. Don't argue with common sense and accept it. This is great for fans and collectors of the series and Activision's 100% committed to maintaining this attribute. Uh, they realize we have put a lot of time and money into acquiring the different characters and upgrading them, and they appreciate that. To prove it, they refer to all returning Skylanders. Uh, there was a comment on Unboxing Bash. <laughs> They refer to all returning Skylanders as Legacy Skylanders. This is not to be confused with the Legendary Skylanders, i.e. Toys R Us here in the U.S., but it's a standalone term. If the character has previously existed, it has a legacy that they are going to preserve. I know a lot of people will argue this and mention Activision is a huge company and they make tons of money, and I will counter that as true and they have the business sense to know it is smart to keep previous figures active. Uh, there are still people arguing with this, and I don't know why. Uh, this is just me freehanding it now for you. Warnado, uh, we'll just assume, say he's not coming back. It's just going to be Series 1 here. He will work in Swap Force just like Giants. Uh, again, they realize that you tracked him down in SSA, paid the 10 bucks, or got him in a triple pack, whatever, and they want you to be able to continue to play as him. Uh, I don't know why some people are shocked by that. It's like a really good thing, you know. Uh, I'd understand an uproar if it was the opposite. If they were like, oh, we're not going to let you play the characters you already have. You have to buy new. They're doing the exact opposite. They're doing the smart thing. They're doing the common sense thing. And uh, my advice is just be happy about it. Uh, next thing we did, they mentioned uh, Vicarious Visions, new graphics engine, and gameplay elements. Uh, the next topic was Vicarious Visions and how they created a brand new graphic engine. It truly looks amazing. If you have followed along on the blog or my YouTube channel, you know that I play the game for the gameplay itself, not the graphics. Uh, great graphics are a bonus to me. Swap Force looked incredible. I've said it many times and I cannot stress it enough. I may finally buy an HD TV just to fully enjoy the depth of the scenes. That's no exaggeration. Uh, I currently don't have a flat panel TV. I don't have an HD TV. Uh, when I watch, you know, like NFL or the sports, I get that like giant black bar at the top and there's a tiny picture. Uh, I guess kind of like the way this records, you know. But uh, to me, a great game is a great game. Super Mario World 1991 from the SNES, one of my favorite games to date. Commander Keen was awesome. I like Blake Stones were both Apogee titles from back in the day. Uh, while some people, you know, have been running around bashing the Wii for years, uh, some of the best games I've played have been on the Wii with its inferior graphics, if you will. Uh, to me, if you're focused solely on graphics, you've got some problems because you're probably missing a ton of great games. That said, uh, as I mentioned in the post, I appreciate graphics. I think they're nice to look at. It doesn't make up for having a bad game. But uh, I'm not one, you know, like I said, to be easily impressed just by graphics. But I will say Swap Force looked really good. Uh, it looked awesome at the Nintendo deal where W Drums and I, and I recorded some stuff for them. It looked good at their booth. It looked great in the back room. Uh, it was just, it looks really, really good. Uh, next up is new game element jumping. Hey, it solved the glitch in the alpha build. Uh, what was hilarious and awesome at the same time was a glitch that popped up. Keep in mind this is the alpha build. I've actually had it happen in SSA and Giants. I think I've recorded a few of them. It's basically where a move, we'll say Crusher's Rock Slide in this case, netted the player outside a fence at the edge. Uh, I'm sure if you've played Skylanders enough, you've had something happen. Usually you switch characters, you know, and it like shoo, centers them back over where they should be. Uh, sometimes if they're flying type, you know, you can kind of do something, get them over. Um, sometimes a special move will do it again. Uh, they tried pulling him back in place, uh, same thing we do, but it worked to no avail. As a last inch attempt to keep from resetting, they jumped. Uh, the crazy thing is that it worked, <laughs> and uh, 
I don't know if they had this planned, I truly believe it just happened, but the biggest and most flaunted core improvement, jumping, saved the day. Uh, after this, the alpha build was flawless, that's a good sign. Uh, and again, that's something that I feel like even if this was the final polished version of the game, it could happen. I say that because it's done it to me in, you know, SSA and Giants. Uh, particularly in Giants. Uh, I think Chapter 9, Chaos's Castle, up there by the pool. I don't know how many times I've had issues there. But, uh, the bottom line is he actually just, we'll say, you know, it was Hot Dog. He had, uh, I think it was still Crusher. They pulled him on and off the portal a few times. But he just hit the jump button, cleared the fence, and he was back in motion. Like I said, no issues after that. Uh, that raises a question, why are we just now jumping? As far as why jumping wasn't included in the first few titles, their response was they wanted each character to feel different. Uh, I assume this means they wanted players to use other moves to get to bounce pads. For examples, all characters can walk to the bounce pad, but they each have unique abilities. Terrafin can burrow. Mornado has a tornado to get around. Stealth Elf has her tertiary move. Zap can slide. Thumpback can slide. Sunburn can teleport. You get the general idea. They really wanted players to use the abilities to navigate Skylands, not just walk. Uh, is that true, or are they just saying that? I don't know. Personally, I didn't have a problem with the uh, bounce pads. Uh, that said, I'm certainly not going to argue with jumping. Uh, if they just fabricated that reason, and it's actually a really good reason, uh, you know, Hot Dog can kind of do the wall, Shroom Boom can burrow a little bit, you know, Sunburn can teleport... Uh, Fright Rider kind of has his gallop, you know, there's Ghost Roaster, Drill Sergeant have the charge attacks like Cinder. Uh, I'll take them at their word there, you know, it makes sense. They feel like after two titles you've kind of gotten used to it and now we're ready to jump and you'll appreciate, you know, the different moves and whatnot. Uh, next up, Swap Force Alert, Undead Element Night Shift, uh, the Vampire Boxer. Uh, after this, they pulled Crusher and put on a new Undead Element Swap Force character named Night Shift. He was acclaimed as a vampire boxer with a killer uppercut. I saw it. I think it must have been fully upgraded. It was along the lines of a soul gym to me, just like a charged up attack that released a giant glove cutting up through the screen. Uh, very cool. I believe it was also mentioned he could teleport, which makes sense given the shift part of his name. Uh, obviously that's going to tie in, you know, with like the bottom end of the swap force, the ability. Uh, next up we had a new in-game character, pretty sure his name was Willow Bark. Uh, we then saw a nice vivid cutscene where a guy I dubbed Tree Ranger, although I think his name was Willow Bark, he's just an in-game character kind of along the lines of Arbo, Hugo, you know, T-Bone, etc. Uh, he approached and mentioned some crystals had been stolen. He had a great personality. Uh, he's like a stump smash looking guy with facial hair and what I equate to a Canadian Royal Mounted Police Officer. Uh, very official and distinctive voice. He had the prototyp prototypical army cop vibe going on. Uh, he essentially came up, you know, and he was like, uh, There's been some stolen crystals. You know, like I said, the way he looked, uh, kind of put like the big mustache Dennis Gage style on Stump Smash and, you know, toss in some, like, police, army, sergeant type vibes and, uh, that's Willow Bark. Uh, next thing they showcased was the drop-in, drop-out co-op gameplay. Uh, they then highlighted the drop-in, drop-out gameplay mechanic. It worked flawlessly and the two helped clear the area naturally. To finish the demo, the main speaker dropped out. Uh, while in, he used a new air element swap for Skylander Free Ranger. Uh, he kind of had lasers that shot out and got around by way of tornado. It looked really good. Uh, Swap Force Alert, Air Element Free Ranger, Jet Vac meets Warnado. Uh, shortly after uh, Freeze Blade, the new Water Element Swap Force Skyliner was introduced, he has great projectile attacks. Uh, Swap Force Alert, Water Element Freeze Blade. He's come into the account now. Uh, to highlight to us the swap ability, we saw them mention a scenario where you'd want Freeze Blade's ranged attack coupled with the speed and mobility of Free Ranger's Tornado lower half. So, a quick press and the figures are apart. Uh, we were now introduced to Freeze Ranger. They used this swap combo to make quick work of the enemy at hand, and uh, we were then reminded that 16 times 16 is 256. And as the slogan goes, uh, our new power's choice definitely rings true. 
what we saw next was pretty cool. Uh, I don't think any of the gameplay we had access to showed this. It may have. Uh, basically, it was a dual element zone. Uh, the next portion of the level highlighted a brand new game component, dual element zones. This is not a swap force area. Uh, it's not an elemental zone. It's a dual element zone. Uh, it's basically a garden variety elemental gate but with two elements. Uh, the one we saw was fire and magic. Uh, so how do you get in this dual element zone? There are two ways. First, if you have a swap force character, uh, say hoot loop and blast zone, that's magic and fire, uh, you can option them out together and the gate will open. If you're playing co-op, you could enter in as one player being igniter and the other player being spiral. Uh, so if you are one player and you don't have the swap force character for some reason, you're probably going to need to go co-op, you know, and just like put a second character on and get in. If you're one player and you've got, you know, the swap force character, at least one from each element, you make quick work of it, just swap the character in and get going. Uh, coolest thing to me, though, is not the method of opening the gate, but the look inside. It is a very visually stimulating look that equally divides the path uh, through conceivably the entire area. One half looks like your fire zone and the other looks like a magic zone. That of course I'm referring to like the red with the fire elements and then the magic is kind of like the purple transparent look, you know. Uh, you've seen them in SSA and Giants. Uh, and it's really stunning in HD thanks to Vicarious Vision's new graphic engine. Uh, we then got a character brief. Uh, Let's see, we then got briefed on the 16 core characters and 32 new characters, no names or details, just numbers. And they again stressed how the 100 plus now legacy toys would all work. Uh, magic element, light core, star strike, light core, and regular pose. At this point in time, we had all seen star strike, the highly questioned at the time, uh, mystery magic element character. The packaging at the Power A booth indicated her as light core. That's where we also got her name. Uh, someone asked if she would have a regular pose, and the answer was something along the lines of, I believe so. Uh, that, of course, follows suit. You know, you've got Jetvac Light Core, you've got Jetvac's regular pose. The Light Core aren't like standalone. Uh, it's kind of like Chill and Light, well, Legendary Light Core, Chill in her case. But you get what I'm saying. There's essentially, you know, we'll say there's going to be Series 2 Hot Dog. Uh, that pose, he should have a bone. And it's got fire on the ends. I'm thinking he's probably going to be a light core force. So you'd have his, you know, regular series two pose for swap force, and then we would have like his light core pose, you know, which would probably be slightly different. Uh, but you know, you get the idea. The light core characters are basically going to be characters slated for the game, just repose and with a light up effect. Uh, let's see here. Da, 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 da. Assuming that is correct, we will likely see the same setup as Giants where the eight light core are repose characters with light up effects. I also heard Stryback Star Strike will be very cool. Uh, more on that later. I'll save that one for the your questions deal. Uh, then we had some downtime. I started firing away questions. <laughs> and, uh, the thing I wanted to know the most, and this seemed like a good time to ask, it was the fate of the eight castaways from Spyro's Adventure. Obviously, I'm a big fan of them. That's why I have these tournaments we've been doing. Uh, personal favorites, Warnado, Dino Ring, uh, Ghost Roaster. I'm also big on Boomer. Uh, Sunburn and Camo are great. Uh, Voodoo's good. Whamshell's in there. I know he's got a lot of followers. Uh, and in particular, a lot of the questions people wanted me to ask revolved around, oh, you know, hey, there better be Ghost Roaster and Whamshell's going to be back, right? Can you check on Boomer? Tell me about Camo. So... To condense all that into one, it was just like, hey, are they coming back? Uh, as in the blog post, while we had downtime, we got to ask some very quick questions. I jumped at the chance and asked, will any of the eight original castaways, and of course I referenced it, uh, castaway is not an official term, it's like something I use. Uh, different people call them different things. To me, castaways makes sense. But uh, the answer was yes. Uh, I was very happy at this moment in time. I didn't get details on which ones, uh, all one, two, four, six, etc., but at least some should be back. Uh, this is big news for a lot of folks like myself, uh, many of my favorite characters among the eight castaways. Uh, 
pretty excited about that again i have no clue if it's going to be one two four six or eight you know pretty sure that's not going to happen all eight of them uh, i'm thinking at worst uh, we have a pretty good chance of seeing four of them come back don't hold me to this and nothing they said this is just me speculating at this point this isn't even in the blog uh, i tried to keep the blog you know like hardcore facts for you um da -da, where were we okay now swap force alert we have the introduction of the life element stink bomb the ninja skunk skunk uh, they then got back into the demo and talked about stink bomb he's basically a ninja skunk who will use his musk to hide himself uh, think along the lines of stealth elf scarecrows they said the bottom half combines very well with some of the other characters uh, next up, Willow Bark and Evil Eye Sugar Bat's new enemies, new chaos plot. Uh, the next portion of the level saw Willow Bark uh, introduce us to Sugar Bats and Evil Eye Sugar Bats, a product of Chaos's magic, and attempts to take over the Cloud Brick Islands. You basically have to battle them to break the spell and return them to normal. The character who took on this task was Stink Shift, and yes, it made for interesting gameplay. Stink Shift, of course, would be Stink Bomb's top and uh, night shifts bottom i can say what that reminded me of you know like in donkey kong country returns for the wii and then now for the 3ds uh, you know the main bad guy they kind of come in and they like hypnotize everyone and you know he has to go and fight him uh, it's the first thing that popped in mind uh, then up we had swap force introduces new gameplay mechanics we then caught the drill of the eight new gameplay mechanics via the swap force bottom ends this led to a very cool demo with wash buckler his bottom half has the ladder image to indicate he can climb this opened up the swap force area and bear in mind this is a standalone deal swap force only uh, if you've got hot dog i don't care if it's series one series two if it gets a light core uh, don't care if it's camo, don't care if it's a giant, uh, don't care if it's legendary light core chill. The swap force areas uh, are going to require that specific action. In the case of Wash Buckler, you've seen his, you know, figure. He's got the little ladder down here that indicates he can climb. Um, let's see here. They opened up the swap force area and what we saw was a long, chaotic wall you had to ascend. It reminded me personally a lot of the uh, Super Mario Galaxy upward areas, if you will. Uh, you climb up while dodging obstacles, navigating blocked paths, and of course dealing with enemy items. I'm going to go ahead now and uh, give you something different to look at. Uh, that is the poster you can get at GameStop. And then if Sprocket will cooperate, that's their little flyer there. Uh, Let's see here. Uh, that thing looked crazy. Uh, the guy was having a tough time getting up it. Uh, I mean, you essentially, you know, like I said, you literally climb upward, but you've got enemies that scroll inside to side while you're trying to move upward. Uh, again, if you've played Mario Galaxy or some of the more recent Mario games, that's kind of the thing it reminds me of. Uh, next up, puzzles, mini games, bonus missions, and more platforming. Uh, what we saw there with the uh, climbing deal of Swap or Swashbuckler. Uh, led us into the mention of new puzzles and mini games and the chance to use the jumping ability to make use of more platforming. They also mentioned the 20 bonus missions you can unlock. They also verify there will be individual screen for objectives to clear and review, etc. Basically the same thing you're used to seeing after clearing a level. So we didn't actually see that. They said it. What I can assume from that is we're going to have like the same star-based chapter goals kill all the enemies, uh, complete in under 12 minutes, uh, collect whatever they put in. There's supposed to be a crud ton of hats in this one. Uh, so that's going to be pretty cool. No details at all, like if they're going to make like a basketball mini game or boxing or miniature golf, you know, no information there. Uh, the 20 bonus missions, I did hear a little bit more about uh, somewhere in there and then with the developers when I asked they're kind of going to be like personal quests this is something that sounds pretty cool to me uh, take for example like igniter's backstory where he went and he was basically sealed into his armor as a curse he's been trying to track down the witch uh, will they be along those lines I don't know uh, does it make sense yes and again, they're apparently they're supposed to add quite a bit of gameplay to the game, uh, but there's 20 of them. 
I have no clue how it's going to break down. I don't know if it's going to be like exclusive to the brand new core characters, if it's exclusive to the Swap Force characters. Obviously being 20 is kind of a strange number, doesn't really directly translate over. You know, like if it would have been 16 or something, we could have been like, oh, you know, I wonder if it's going to be these. Uh, it could be a combination. You know, we might see like eight Series 3 characters, eight brand new core characters. It could be, you know, I mean, for all we know, we'll say Ghost Roaster doesn't get reposed. He might have a personal quest. I mean, it, I don't know. They didn't go into a lot of detail on him. It's just supposed to be stuff you can kind of unlock. And, uh, again, it was mentioned that they're kind of like a personal quest, whatever that means. Uh, don't know. I will try to get more clarification on that for you. Uh, ta -ta. Then I got to fire some more questions off. And uh, this one, uh, it was a popular, uh, you know, question. What about battle packs? What about adventure packs? I just went ahead and went two for one, asked on both of them. Uh, as we got a little downtime before leaving, and they were crazy enough to ask if there were more questions, uh, like I said, I fired off, and uh, there will be two of each. Uh, that's what they told me. Uh, one is said to involve Cali, if I understood correctly. Uh, that sounded interesting, and then with the developers, I was actually told that it would just be a location piece. When I heard that, and I knew that in the back room we'd been told one involved Callie, my brain started going, and I was thinking it would be like a character. You know, like essentially we'd have, you know, chaos, like just say chaos in my hand is Callie. I was thinking, you know, you'd have like a Callie figure that you bought separately that you stuck on the portal, and it worked like a location piece where it unlocked a new area. Uh, clearly that is incorrect, uh, I or something's got to give i mean it could be correct but i'm not really thinking it is because as mentioned in this flyer i got from gamestop uh wednesday night you can see the standard old adventure pack layout there new character uh, location piece two magic items uh, i have to say though uh based on what i heard in there and then what i was kind of told afterwards would make sense to do it like i said where like you know it's always been a well how the heck would we get like an eon or a hugo personally i'd love to have a t-bone character to kind of have mixed in with the skylanders uh, it could conceivably be done that way i mean obviously uh, they just have to change their format up a little bit but uh for better or worse right now i think expect what you saw in that gamestop flyer that i've archived for you that's essentially going to be same old format like we saw with Terrafin and Pirate Seas, Ghost Roaster, Dark Light, Crypt, etc. Uh, but, you know, what we do know, there will be two. Obviously, one is Tower of Time with Popthorn, and there's another one. And of those two, one is supposed to involve Callie to some degree. Uh, maybe she's just like a been kidnapped or something. I don't know. This is just me speculating at this point. Uh, da, da, da. Let's see here. The end of our private demo, the fun was over all too soon. Uh, this was pretty much it for the behind the closed doors private screening of gameplay uh, end of the things. It was a blast, and with the low number of people, we had a great setting to see and experience the new mechanics and visuals from the team at Vicarious Visions and Activision. Uh, not to be done just yet, uh, they then, after showing us this behind closed doors stuff you don't see in the demo and getting inside information that's when they uh pulled out a box and they gave us all e3 hot dog which i did ask what his official name is if they have one to me he's copper metallic i think at this point in time you pretty much call him whatever you want but if you say e3 hot dog pretty much covers everything but uh, that is actually where we got him i think a couple of the guys actually want him spinning the wheel too uh, so they'll have extras or something uh, da, da, da. let's see here then exiting the screening room in the private back room I actually got to stay in the doorway a little while longer for my portal question you wanted to be asked they made every effort to find out they just couldn't confirm anything luckily I got answers later in the evening and yes it should work with Skylander Spiral's Adventure and Skylander's Giants uh, I think Steve like the head guy uh, does like all the demo stuff in the videos you see uh, he's who I asked, you know, directly, because that's who was in the room with us, and uh, said it was a great question. He wasn't sure. He ran down, uh, apparently 
caught up with a few of the higher up people, uh, you know, like I guess working on it real diligently, and uh, they couldn't provide answers 100%. And then uh, later on, after hours, when we were in the booth by ourselves with the developers, uh, I got to hit up the uh, brothers from Vicarious Visions with that one. And uh, what they said is that it should work with SSA, with Giants. Uh, that way you don't have to keep all the portals around all the time. You can just have that new one. And just like with Giants, where we saw you could use it with SSA if you wanted to. Uh, should be the same setup. So, again, not 100% on that, but I'd say we're like 99.5%. You know, so I'll go ahead and personally consider it. But, uh, you know, something could change. You know, who knows. But I'm pretty confident it's going to be as I was told. Uh yeah so that's it uh at that point i exited the screen room after chatting with the game player a bit left the back room and returned to the main play main floor for our private screening of the e3 trailer if you haven't seen that i've got it up on youtube what's cool about it uh it was just like the 10 of us or so you know there wasn't the massive throng of people like there was during the day and uh it is if you seen that video and you see like the green curtain you think oh i'm not going to watch it that's just the same thing i've already seen a million times no it is not it is exclusive to e3 uh basically what that means they kind of added in some really cool like gameplay elements but then on the flip side there's like these snide insults about you know like bloggers and ironic t-shirts from eruptor and whatnot uh, it actually, uh, what I take from it, you know, not the insults, it's just playful, but, uh, kind of get a good feel like Night Shift, we got a good listen to his voice, uh, you got a feel for how the characters are going to interact, uh, that's something that I addressed with the developers and I'll have answers for you, but just based on that, you can expect good things, uh, you know, like Stink Bomb, you know, let off a Stink Bomb, <laughs> and, uh, all the characters reacted, you know, Rattleshake sprung up in the air, they all scurried about. Uh, we saw Eruptor running around trying to fly like Blast Zone. Uh, we heard Pop Fizz again, I said it in that video, I'll say it here. He's been on the artwork at the Power A stuff. Uh, he was in the trailer heavily utilized. I am pretty freaking sure he's going to have a Series 2 pose for Swap Force in some degree. Again, that's not been confirmed by anyone, that's just me using common sense. Uh, but you get to hear Night Shift's voice. He sounds, I mean, he's similar to Eyebrawl, but he's kind of got more sinister. You know, where Eyebrawl, you kind of pick like a big villainous type person. Like Night Shift, you kind of get more like the vampire thing going. Uh, but yeah, if you have not seen that, check it out. You can find it on the blog. You can find it on YouTube, posted to Facebook, Twitter, Google+, pretty much everywhere. Uh, make sure to watch it, though, because you get a feel for the character interaction. Uh, significantly longer than the uh, other one as well. Uh, when I started out, I do a little voice intro deal, kind of tell you what to look for. So uh, if you don't want to see that, just skip ahead. But uh, it is pretty neat. Uh, let's see here. In conclusion... It was a killer experience, and as much as I wish we could have filmed, uh, all you really need to know is things looked great, and there's going to be a lot to like about Swap Force. And again, uh, at the time I wrote this, I said more Swap Force to come. Stay tuned as I highlight your questions and their respective answers in greater detail. That's still coming. There's still a ton more stuff on its way. Uh, had an awesome time. Uh, again, can't thank the people enough that brought us out there, let us experience this all firsthand. And uh, then we all get to kind of relay it back to you in our own way. Again, mine's probably like the ridiculously detail-based version, but uh, that's my style, you know. Uh, it's kind of what I've been doing, I guess, you know. Some people prefer, you know, some people prefer more like action-in-your-face type stuff, but uh, again, that's just the way I do it. I kind of like to try to focus on all the little facets and trinkets and everything, but so... Uh, as mentioned, your specific questions, I got some of them addressed and answered. Uh, I'm going to actually, I posted two videos last night, kind of highlight the 3DS upgrades, which are awesome. And uh, actually what happens with half of a Swap Force character on the portal, that was one of the questions. I actually grew to love that one, just because I was so curious about it. Uh, still going to try to send some in, see if we can't get answers. A lot of the stuff, I mean, they simply can't tell us. I think... Most of them know. If they don't, there are definitely people that do. But 
you know, you don't like spill all your beans ahead of time. You want to kind of like slowly release things, keep it interesting all the way up to launch type situation. So uh, I got a lot of that, like uh, can't comment, uh, you know, check with someone else type thing. You know, I mean, it's it's good business basically. You know, I mean, we got so much that was revealed at E3. I know a lot of people said there wouldn't be Jack, and I mean, there actually was a ton, you know, but. Uh, one of those things, and uh, I mean, I understand where they're coming from. Uh, as much as I'd like all my questions to be answered, which my first ones would be, give me the character roster, you know, uh, names and slogans, etc. Uh, kind of takes some of the fun out of it. I mean, we know quite a bit already, and uh, I understand withholding information at this point. That said, uh, still, for some of your questions, I'm trying to get them answered. I'm going to send off some emails here pretty soon. And, uh... I've also seen like a bunch of like confusion on some topics, you know, like the heroics and the personal quests and stuff. Which I mentioned the personal quests, even I'm a little unsure. Uh, particularly, like I wonder like which characters get them. If there's like, you know, Blizzard Chills coming back and she's got a quest, you know, she's gonna go find the Ice Queen or whatever. Uh, if it's gonna be like reserved to new ones, if it's reserved to like Series Three returning characters or something. Uh, so, you know, I mean, I'm still working on it. I want to try and basically get to the point where I've exhausted every option. Uh, the developers, you know, can't release it. The PR people might want to, but they can't. Basically get to a point where I can say, hey, I legitimately tried to get all this information for you. Here's what I found out. Here's what I've turned up. Here's what I've pressed, prodded, and annoyed to the point that we got some information. And uh, here's simply what we, you know... We'll find out later because they can't tell us everything. But uh, stay tuned for that. Uh, like I said, uh, some of them really good questions. I've got pretty good answers to some of them too. Like I said, the whole backroom thing was awesome. Uh, I mean, it was like above and beyond what any of us expected. I mean, like I said, you know, I mentioned this out there even. Uh, had they not have invited me, I would have been covering E3, kind of updating things. Uh, probably would have a ton more information up because I would have just had minimal stuff. Getting to go there firsthand, I have as much content as I could, you know, uh, basically keep batteries and SD cards going. Uh, still have a ton of cool exclusive stuff coming for you. But, uh, I mean, I would have been covering it from home, just having to go on, you know, second-hand, third-hand information. Uh, getting to be there in person was awesome, and then they gave us, like, the, you know, special treatment, getting to see screening backstage, uh, getting to stay late where we'd be like literally the only people in there that aren't security or like janitorial type duties and uh, You know Really get to take in the game get to ask a lot of questions. I mean it was just an awesome experience again can't thank them enough uh, And again that ties in with everyone watching this uh, if not for y'all uh, probably would not have been one of the people that got to head out in that direction. So uh, it's much appreciated. That's why I'm trying to get this out to you in my usual uh, ridiculously long, uh, detailed fashion. But uh, like I said, if you're watching it, I guess you must not hate it. Might even prefer it. So stick to what works. You know. Uh, bottom line, I can tell you, I had an awesome time. Learned a lot. Uh, really did try to get your questions answered. Uh, they're still coming. I'm still working on that, as I've mentioned. But uh, if you take anything at all from this video or any of the E3 uh, content I get up, Swap Force truly did look awesome. Uh, again, I'm not just making up the stuff about having to get an HD TV. Uh, the graphics looked that good. Uh, the gameplay was killer. Uh, pretty much any of the gameplay stuff. I know some of the guys have gotten you know their videos up and everything. Uh, Usually, you know, like, it's real hard for us all to kind of like be there and film and play. I mean, you almost need like a team of people with you to do things well. Uh, kind of out of your element. You don't know what to carry. None of us have been to E3 before type situations. But if you pay attention, I mean, there's usually like one of the guys filming while someone else played. And uh, in the background, you hear not only like the person currently playing, like, oh, wow, you hear the other person filming you know, just being too excited to stay quiet, you know, basically. And uh, there's some really cool stuff. Like I said, that behind the screens demo, uh, if you take the charge attacks, you know, and you basically like hold the A button down, we'll say, and then trigger happy releases, the auto blast or something. 
uh, that uppercut night shift did was killer. I mean, it literally like this giant, you know, like you think a chills call the narwhal where the whale just, you know, clears out the screen for you. That uppercut, and it looked to be, I mean, you only see it like that, but I mean, there was like the undead logo, you know, on the glove. It looked, it was pretty well detailed. And I mean, just this giant glove came up in the screen and looked really cool. Uh, I know he also had like this jaw thing. I don't quite I think W drums uh, really enjoyed that one he's probably got some more on it but uh, everything I saw looked really cool there wasn't anything where I was like yeah you know whatever it was just like wow you know the whole time and uh, that's good because that's gonna mean that the game is going to be very well done uh, again after hours I spent a lot of my time talking to the developers I'm gonna cover that extensively later but uh, very cool guy, super down to earth. Uh, don't want to put too much information in this video just yet. I'll save that for your questions because that's where it kind of applies more to. But rest assured, uh, they take pride in what they do. Uh, that's kind of what the name of their company implies they would do. And uh, I think everyone's going to be pretty happy with it. Again, I've seen a few things I can't mention. Uh, kind of got to experience it first hands a little different than like experiencing it through a video or what have you but uh it looks like it's going to be a ton of fun and uh, personally i can't wait for october 13th when we can get our hands on swap force so uh questions comments feel free to ask here on youtube however if you want a quicker response try the blog oneofwisdom.com you can follow me on twitter like me on facebook circle me on google plus whichever you prefer uh, if you're enjoying the E3 content or something else on the channel, be sure to subscribe. That way you'll get all the feed settings and everything sent to you. But uh, again, your questions, if you recall, I had the standalone blog post on it. had it written out on the iPad, had it on while I was in the room, uh, ready to fire questions away. Uh, still coming, and I think uh, the stuff I was able to get answers to, I think people will be pretty happy with. So uh, That's it. I am still working on that, and by still working on that, I don't mean like a video. I mean like I'm actually still uh, attempting to like get information from people to answer some of the questions. So uh, Hopefully good things come from that, and uh, maybe persistence will pay off. We can get even more cool information to share with you. But uh, stay tuned for that one. Uh, just a few of the questions I do have definitive answers to. Uh, Going to give you, you know, pretty pretty good feelings about what's to come with Swap Force. So, again, I'll quit rambling. Uh, like I said, and I'll put this in the description. If you don't want to watch the video, just read the blog. It'll save you a little bit of time. Uh, if you don't like to read, I'll read it to you. You just have to put up with it taking a little bit longer. <laughs> but, uh, Again, I'm going to go try to get this one cranked out, uploaded tonight, and uh, I'll see if I can't get some other, uh, you know, a couple quick E3 floor type videos up for you. But again, thanks for watching, and uh, I will catch you back here shortly.